Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Wala taqulanna li shayin inni fa'ilun dalika ghada." This is one ayah. Allah says, "Don't you dare say that I am definitely going to do that tomorrow. Don't you dare say it ever about anything that I am definitely doing that tomorrow." If you stop at this ayah, that there seems to be a problem because your boss says you better hand in the assignment tomorrow. You say yeah, definitely, but people make definite promises all the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going. Are you coming to the invitation? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going. We say these definite things all the time. It is only in the next ayah that Allah completes the subject, and He says, "Illa an yasha Allah," with the exception that you say that Allah wills. I, I intend to do this fully, except if Allah wills. Meaning, this is why in the culture of the Muslims, when we talk about the future, we use the words "insha Allah." If Allah were to will, I, I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock, insha Allah. Meaning. If Allah decides that I'm not able to see you, that's out of my control. My intention is there, but Allah's plans can be different from my plans. But here we have to understand a very powerful aspect of balance. The Muslims, unfortunately, subhanAllah, when we get further from the book of Allah, even the beautiful teachings of our religion become ugly. So we say, inshaAllah, which means probably not. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, inshaAllah. So inshaAllah is actually our way of getting out of making a commitment. These ayat are not about escaping a commitment. As a matter of fact, inni, fa'ilun, dalika, ghadan are very strong words. For sure, I am absolutely going to do that tomorrow. Making a statement of guarantee and making a promise and making a commitment that you're definitely committed to doing this is not the problem. As a matter of fact, that's what you should do. You shouldn't just casually say, okay. If you can't do something, say, I can't do it. If you can't be there, just say, I can't be there. But if you make a promise, then commit to it. And then add, the only way that this will not happen from me is if Allah decides something that's beyond my control. That's illa an yasha Allah. Illa an yasha Allah does not mean if I wake up late, I'm not coming, or if I'm not in the mood. You don't use insha Allah for that. That's a misuse of this powerful phrase. But then Allah adds, He adds, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيت Mention your Rabb. Make mention of your Rabb when you forget. It was interesting, Allah Azza wa didn't say in نَسِيت If you forget. He said when you forget. And there's a big difference between if and when. Because if something happens, it might happen, it might not happen. But when you say, إِذَا نَسِيت When you forget, Allah is guaranteeing. Allah is guaranteeing that you and I will forget. There will be times where we make promises about the future, and we're not going to remember to say, inshaAllah. We're going to make plans in our head. Sometimes you don't even say something. By the way, قَوْل in Arabic. قَالَ يَقُولُ in Arabic is not just speaking with your, head, with, with your mouth, but even saying something to yourself. Just a thought. Sometimes you have thoughts, I'm definitely doing this or that or the other. Even that thought should be accompanied with insha'Allah. You know, sometimes you're talking to somebody on the phone and you make a promise about the future. I'll see you at dinner. Okay, I'll see you. Assalamu alaikum. And you hang up and you go, oh, I didn't say insha'Allah. Now that doesn't mean you call them back and say, hey, by the way, insha'Allah. Just wanted to leave you a voicemail, insha'Allah. No, no, don't do that. They don't have to hear insha'Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal wants to hear you say it. You just say it to your, your Rabb. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتِ